Picture three, seeing the ox. Through sound, you gain entry. By sight, you face your source. The six senses are none different. In each daily deed, plainly there, like salt in water or glue in paint. Raise your eyebrows, it is nothing other. In the trees, nightingales sing and sing again. Sun warms a soft wind. Green willows line the bank. Here, there's nowhere left for it to hide. Its majestic head and horns, no artist could draw. In spring sun, in the green willow strands, see its timeless form. In search of the ox, we started out on the path of practice and finally came across the tracks of the ox. The third picture, seeing the ox, shows a stage where we actually catch sight of the ox. In other words, it is the stage of Kensho one's true nature of Satori. Through sound you gain entry. By sight you face your source. By listening carefully to the call of the ox we open the gate of the ideal and are able for the first time to encounter it in our heart-mind. In Buddhism, it is said our consciousness has six functions or six roots. Eye, ear, nose, tongue, body and mind. Among these, the working of the ears is the most marvellous. It is said that Canon Bodhisattva is sensitive to all the sounds of the world. It is not just sounds, but all the workings of the eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body and mind are canon bodhisattva.
still among these, sounds do the most work in our consciousness. Shakyamuni awakened when he saw the morning star at dawn. Rayan Osho awakened when he looked at the blossoms of a peach tree. Badabara Bodhisattva, it is said, experienced Satori when he got into a bath. But in addition to these ways, there seem to have been quite a few people who experienced Satori on hearing a sound. Mumon Osho, the compiler of the Gateless Barrier, suddenly was awakened on hearing the drum in the dining hall. Kyogen Osho flicked a scrap of tile against a green bamboo in a bamboo grove and at the sound of the tok, suddenly had Kensho. Haku and Osho heard the sound of the temple bell at dawn and instantly were swept by Satori. The haiku poet Basho had his kensho at hearing the splash of water when a frog leaped into an old pond. This is what is meant by through sound you gain entry, by sight you face your source. Through some external stimulus, Satori is triggered. The plop sound made by the frog that leaped into the old pond wasn't just a bomb. It hit Basho as if the entire universe had exploded. When Rian saw the peach blossoms in bloom, he leaped up in astonishment. When you think about it, we should all be astonished at the world we're living in, but we are not the least bit excited. Without something fresh, new, to move your consciousness like this, you will not penetrate to the source. The six senses 
and none different. What I have said is true not merely for the ears, but also for the eyes. It is the same also for the sense of smell and of taste as well. Similarly for sensation and thought. Eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body and mind. All six roots are oneself. Nothing which touches the six roots is not a gateway to Kensho. In each daily deed, plainly there. Deed here means act, activity or action. Buddha nature is activity. In the eyes it refers to seeing. In the ears it means hearing. In the nose it means smelling an odour. In the mouth, it means talking. In these activities of our consciousness, isn't the ox here showing its head? Buddha nature is here nakedly revealed. There is nothing which hides it. When you have been able to achieve samadhi in meditation and have got some understanding of emptiness, we provisionally call this Kensho, seeing one's true nature. But Kensho achieved while sitting on a meditation cushion is weak in action. Through contact with the outside world, you must also grasp the life that throbs there. The power that you've built up through Samadhi and meditation is smashed to pieces by the sounds of the outside world. It is shattered by the sights of the outside world. At that point, suddenly our self-nature externalizes and throbs into life. Is the sound me, or am I the sound? The sound and I are one. The sound and I go gong. When subject and object are one, there the ox comes trotting along.
Buddha nature is not a precious antique to be wrapped in brocade and packed away in a wooden box. Our Buddha nature reveals itself clearly in our daily work. That is because Buddha nature is act, activity. like salt in water or glue in paint. Salt in running water is not visible to the eye. In the same way the glue that is always mixed into an artist's paints is not visible to the eye. The eye sees only the colours, blue or green, or red. In exactly the same way, our Buddha nature has no shape or form. But in our every activity, it is present. seeing, hearing, or speaking, laughing, crying, or getting angry. Aren't these all Buddha nature? If you take these away, where is their Buddha nature? Raise your eyebrows, it is nothing other. As soon as you move your eyebrows, already Buddha nature is at work. This is so because in order to raise your eyebrows, you have to open your eyes. When you open your eyes and look, then all seeing and all hearing are Buddha nature. All is the ox. If you are looking but cannot see the ox, that means your mind is full of unnecessary thinking prejudice, false knowledge, and mistaken opinions. But when you throw away that false knowledge and those mistaken opinions, when you throw away those prejudices, when you become no mind and then look around, then the ringing of the bell is the call of the ox. The beat of the wooden bell 
is the call of the ox. The screech of a car, the clatter of a train, all are the call of the ox. There you must find the Buddha. In the trees, nightingales sing and sing again. Sun warms the soft wind. Green willows line the bank. Perched on the tip of a plum branch, a nightingale sings with its beautiful voice. Isn't this the ox? Isn't this Buddha nature? At last, the spring breezes have come. The sun has started to warm up. The wind is soft. On the willows, buds are forming. A mild and peaceful spring scene. Everything which touches the eyes, which touches the ears, are they not the ox? Are they not Buddha nature? This is the splashing of the brook is the eloquence of the Buddha. Are not the mountains in colour the pure Buddha body? Here, there's nowhere left for it to hide. Its majestic head and horns no artist could draw. At this point, it could not run away even if it wanted to. All seeing, all hearing is the ox. One could not capture in a picture the beauty of its horns, their fine shape. To attempt to draw them would mean making two things where there was one. The plop of the frog jumping into the pond is an amazing sound. But if you were told to convey this sound to someone else, you would have to use some sound or word as a symbol. If you were told to sing like the nightingale sitting on the branch of the plum tree, your singing, no matter how good, would not approach the real thing. The flowers are red. The willows are green. They are inexpressibly beautiful. 
But if you tried to paint them, you might be able to draw their shape, but you would not be able to draw the living ox. This is what is called Kensho. In spring sun, in the green willow strands, see its timeless form. In the gentle balmy warmth of the spring, there on the tips of the willow strands, swaying in the softly blowing breeze, something green has appeared. The first buds have thrust forth. Is that not Buddha nature there in the willow buds? Isn't that the ox? Don't say you can't catch this ox. That ox, which hasn't moved from eternal culpas in the past, from culpas without beginning in the past, suddenly it's right there. You heard the sounds of the ox, the sound of its moo, the sound of its thud, the sound of its plunk. You persevered in your practice until you clearly saw the ox there in those sounds. Still, you have not yet really caught the ox. You have just caught a glimpse from behind. You still have seven more stages yet to go. To catch the ox and train it is no easy task, but first you must catch sight of it. You have all come here and now walk around hoping to catch a glimpse of the ox. But when you are out, when you are sweeping up in the gardens, the ox is there wandering around. It would be a great shame if you did not see that ox. Everywhere, that ox is just lying there, in the fallen leaves, in the sand flying off the tip of your broom. If you do not spot the ox, then you will have nothing to show for it. To catch sight of the ox, as soon as you can, should be your first desire. 